Today's Take 5 with the Saints on February the 8th profiles a woman whose faithfulness and steadfastness through unimaginable horrors and sufferings has led to a great witness of someone who overcame the odds to proclaim the gospel not only in her home of Sudan, but across the European continent and particularly in Italy where she settled to become a monastic and also is recognized unofficially as the matron saint of those who suffer from the horrible sin of human trafficking. Her name is Josephine Margaret Bakita, and today we celebrate and remember this remarkable woman and her adventures of faith. Our scripture for today to celebrate her feast day comes out of Luke chapter 6 verses 27 through 36. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. We hear that passage from Luke's Gospel about loving our enemies and from probably most of us here in the U.S., most of us who are white Christians, sometimes the image of an enemy is somebody who said mean things to us or who uh, rooked us in a bad business deal or who was dishonest to us or who just did something so thoughtless and cruel to us that we have a hard time forgiving them. And those are appropriate images for enemies. But the concept of enemy takes on a whole different level when we talk about Bakita, as she was known to many of her friends and colleagues. Bakita was born in the late 19th century in the Darfur region, which is now part of southern Sudan. The Darfur region is a region that even today still is one of the most hotly violent and contested regions as a battle between the Sudanese government and the indigenous population of Darfur continues to rage to this day. And in this time, it was a place where there was also great turmoil and slave trafficking because at the age of seven, young Josephine was kidnapped and sold into slavery. And the, tra- the experience for her, according to her own stories later in life, was so traumatic that for a long time she even forgot her name. Bikita, ironically, is a name which means the fortunate one, a name which was actually given to her by her slave traders. At a young age, though, in spite of the horrors of what she saw and experienced, she began to have yearnings and experiences of God as she would look in the heavens, especially sleeping out in open fields at night as she was being taken from place to place. She would look at the moon and the stars and look at the sun during the daytime and imagine what wondrous entity there was that had created all of these things. Slavery, she continued to be traded throughout most of the 19th century and endured this for 12 years. And in 1883, she was sold finally to a European, the Italian consul in Khartoum, Sudan. Eventually, she made her way to Italy with one of her friends. And once she made it to Italy, she was freed and allowed 
to explore the life of what it meant to be freed, and very quickly she discovered that to be free she found indeed an identity and a specific context for her to express that love and awe of God, and that was her newfound faith in Jesus. Baptized in the late 1800s, in 1890 to be specific, she later, a few years after that, entered the uh, the religious life as a Kenosian daughter of charity, moving later in 1902 to the city of Schio in northern Italy, where she served her community. She became so well-known and so well-beloved by children and adults alike that Mother Bakita became an icon of people of, of for all the people of the Italian countryside and the villages for them to come and experience the warmth and generosity of a woman deeply scarred and traumatized. And yet she kept repeating the phrase that she uttered at her own baptism when at the pouring of the water upon her head, she kneeled down and kissed the font and exclaimed, I am now a daughter of God, a reality that she passed on through her love and grace to all whom she met. She indeed is a great example of what it means to truly live a life in which you love your enemies. You love them not by, obviously, condoning what they did to you, or to her in this case, but offering her life as a way of finding hope in the midst of such despair. And as such, she is looked to as a great example for those who continue to this day to suffer from this horrible practice of slave trading in its modern form, also known as human trafficking, a person whose life can be looked upon as an example that there is always a way out through faith and through the tireless efforts of those who fight this practice to this day. I invite you to read more about Paquita and the wonders of her life in the midst of such harsh circumstances and the example of her life as we continue to look upon, to identify, and to help rid the world of this awful practice of human trafficking. Tune in tomorrow as we'll cover our next saint. Thank you for watching this today as one of the saints that truly touches my heart because she is indeed a person inspired by God and one who overcame so much by faith and by the goodness of those who took her in and released her from the abuses of what she suffered. Thank you and join me tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you then. Take care.